up, guys? And of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi Fi battle with Joel's rule, of course, this character. And if you've been following me, you know it, that today is supposed to be an LBA related battle. And it kinda is, but I've decided to actually go one week behind LBA battles because we have some running with schedules, you know, to make those battle come. Uh, in, on a weekly basis, basically. So if I fall one week behind, I shouldn't have this like planning schedule issue. So yeah, with that said, obviously here we are. Um, if you guys don't know Hannah Panam, I guess I should try to introduce her at the same time as I'm introducing the LBA a little bit. So if you want to see this battle, uh, you can see the teams already and just basically fast forward because this will be a bit of a longer intro. Don't worry though, um, it's only longer because I really want to speak a little bit. Uh, that's a small update, I guess, but I, should, I put this update at the end of the video. But anyway, um, Hannah Panna was actually going to try to be a part of the LBA. Uh, I did talk her into it, like, I really wanted to see her there because she's a really, really good player. And of course, she's a good friend and being from Sweden helps because that only made that patriotic feel even bigger. And uh, basically, this is a team that Ellis did design. You know, this is probably the ideal team ish. Uh, Hannah did some twists on it to make it work in her favor, but outside of that, this is probably the team that would do, at least in my regards, probably the most work if you weren't me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is a team that's well constructed for the LBA trials, which obviously is that if you get a maximum of two OU, then basically you can choose two UU and two RU. Your OU mon can be a UU and stuff like that, but that's about it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's all fine and Danny. Like I said, I think this is a very, very crafting, good design team that should do overall pretty darn well. And um, I myself designed a team way back. If uh, since I didn't make it the first time in the LBA, I did eventually get get into it due to uh, due to one dropping and actually was close to winning it all. But if I did create a new team after that, that was heavily, heavily rain based. As you guys can see, it is Mega Swampert, uh, Kingdra, uh, Ludicolo, uh, Tornado C, Excadrill, I was gonna say, but Escaval till the. Oh, Escavaldier, yeah, I'm not saying that name properly ever. And Politoed. So obviously, Politoed and uh, Tornadoes are the ones that are uh, OU. Outside of that, 2 UU and 1 NU and 1 RU. But the issue with this battle, this is obviously a trading battle for Hannah. I really wanted her to do her very best here and basically wait on what she should prepare for. So I think this was like when she was in the mid of it all. Um, though I will say this, just to have it said as a complete mean person. But really, I did gen this team wrong. Or basically the ones I was gonna use could not be used. So I gen it all wrong. So I used their... Um, their um, Bases basically, so Kingdra is not, it's a modest, not fully speed one. Lodicolo Semishu is a modest one, but it's not fully speed. It actually has zero EVs in speed. And Politoed has, what was it? I do believe it had, it, it was definitely, it had Stamp Rock. That was only, because I only had one Drizzle Politoed, so it is a blue W Scald, Ice Beam, Water Gun, and Rest. And I didn't decide to fix it because basically I just need to rain up because this was in the end this was just a training battle for Hannah. So I decided to kinda like I could go out of my way and just redo them, or I could just see how well she holds up against this team. So it's not an ideal team, but at the same time, the team should be able to do some kind of work as the battle goes on anyway. So it's a bit slower for my taste, it's, it's not supposed to be that slow. And uh, basically, Swiss Women is still gonna solve that issue for me to some extent. So yeah, basically, you know, this is decisive of it. And also, um, we have enhanced the graphics a little bit. And I thank just me well for that. Uh, was was a great person um, who has been a long follower, really. Um, you know, man, thank you so much for this because it helped a lot and it looks great. So thank you for helping me out with uh, graphics design and also getting to six frames. It looks amazing. Um, I'm so glad I was able to kind of pull this off. And yeah, longest intro ever. And I will end this video with a small update for you TBU fans out there too. So yeah, with all this in mind, I mean, I have no idea what she will lead with. So I decided to lead with Swamper because I was safest lead if she decided to bring the Cabalion, basically. That was the size of it. So with all this in mind, guys, let's go. 
So yeah, I, I really thought that was the right idea in mind. Now, Shield started with the Green Giants and Tank Road, and I was like, yeah, 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 I need to get out, don't I? So obviously, I'm not gonna stay in for potential Leaf Storm and actually Escavol here does stand a good chance against the Tank Road. There's really not a whole lot you can do outside of hidden Power Fire, which will not kill me. And Megahorn is an area where it could kill. Luckily, she does go for the Leaf Storm, which makes her pretty darn whittled down. And she will bring Ethos, and I should have expected this. I go for the knockoff, which is not ideal, obviously, because I get a justified boost. I should have just gone for Drill Run since I actually pack it, but you know, it is what it is. I do at least knock off the leftovers, but now I have a pretty darn Cobalion, pretty darn strong Cobalion on the field, so I'm just gonna go to Jazz. And like I said, I do believe this is a naive Polito, like it's it's all wrong, like no defenses, nothing like that. But like I said, I do have the dab proc, which in the end is all that matters. So I'm gonna take a close combat. I can't believe I take a close combat. Obviously, it probably isn't that investment in, in, in defense or in attack, and I think I have some defense investment, maybe. So I'm just gonna go for Skull, and my god, it still hurts. Like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was so surprised by the damage, but obviously, you know. We have the rain on the field, you know, that's a thing and all. So I'm just going to go Tornadus. I do believe she's going to keep going for close combat. And I do believe an Iron Head even won't do a whole lot of damage. Now, close combat does a lot of damage to me. Like, yeah, it's it, it, it is resistant damage, sure. But, ouch. And she'll switch out going to Zapdos, which I think is a good switch for this. And uh, I'm myself just going to go for Hurricane. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't do a lot, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's definitely isn't doing a lot, but I do get the confusion. So I'm thinking here, you know, I still have speed, and I should be able to use this my advantage and actually go for a knockoff instead. Tornadoes is not really doing a whole lot in this game outside of dealing with the potential tank growth, but I have a lot of mods that you do that naturally, so I do decide to go for a knockoff. And here's where it kind of dawned on me that, you know what? No. <laughs> Like, of course we're not killing it because I've already knocked off that item. But I also get in the area that I actually need to kill this mod now, I can't do anything else. I was supposed to switch out after the knockoff, it decided to not hit, hit me or anything like that, to go for roost and stuff like that. But now for, I can't switch out because I got a justify boost again on it. So I was like, oh shit, freaking really. Alright, so I do fall to life for but I was pretty upset about that. But at the same time, I couldn't really do anything about it. Um, so I do go, since I have Swiss Swim, I go for, of course, the Kingdra. And she'll bring the Green Giant, and I can tell this much. Green Giant, eat your heart out. This is still a modest Kingdra. Uh, so I do actually decide to go for Dragon Pulse instead of an Ice Beam, most because I was really sure she will switch out. She is not. And of course, you're gonna knock off my specs, which is really unfortunate because Ice Beam does a nasty amount, and I should probably have done this in the first place because that that combination would have killed her. So she goes for Leaf Storm here, and you know, that's all fine and dandy. We actually do live it. A bit surprised about that, but at the same time, I guess that, you know, it is what it is. So she actually takes the chance of actually switching out, and I really thought I could survive uh, uh, the potential of Stealth Frogs. I do believe I go for a Skull here, yeah. That's a neutral play, basically, because I was kind of sure she was going to switch out here. Uh, we don't get the burn on Asmoreal, you know, it is what it is. And I should probably shit my pants when I switched out there because there's a very high chance this is a Belgrano set, right? So I just go to Politoed. Basically, I'm just gonna set up that rain again. And uh, yeah, I think that was the, like the best call I could make. And uh, she actually goes to Aqua Jet, which does hurt because I boost that Aqua Jet, of course, but honestly, it should have hurt it anyway. It's still a 2 kill no matter what. And of course, that's a bandit set. That was probably the. The most keen thing you can take out of that. So anyway, I'm just gonna go to Lodicolo or Tequila. Arriba! No, really. Um, like I said there, uh, it is not speed investment, or have no speed investment, which is unfortunate. Now, I do believe that she's gonna bring the tank rope, so I do decide to go for Nice Moon and smack that bitch up. The green giant that is actually a female green giant so anyway it does hurt a lot and she's gonna switch out i do believe i go for a giga drain here because the life force is gonna take a toll on me no i go for a skull the stronger move and here is where my speed investment kind of boils through 
Uh, I do get the burn, which is awesome, but the thing is, due to me not having fully speed investment here, or at least, I do believe, 212, the Meloetta being Scarfed will be faster, which is really unfortunate, because obviously I do get a good chunk of damage on my Tequila. Wow, that sounded all kind of wrong, but yeah, obviously, it does get a hit on it, which is not supposed to ha happen, basically, but it does do what it's supposed to do, which is really, really good. Now, Aquajet is not an area I've taken us out uh, yet, so she will bring Charlie, and you gonna, guys see here a very, very mighty turn. Now, obviously, the dragon is gonna form, but we still have Tequila, so... Charizard X is dead! <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> <laughs> so we kill freaking Charles like with a skull in the rain. You know, fuck that shit, dude. <laughs> Ludicolo is such a champ. I don't care if it dies there. I was so happy with that turn. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my eyes that are actually full. Now, obviously, you know, we are in a bit of a picky here, and I will actually screw this up a bit because I will make a vault, and Earthquake will kill the Asimuriel. No doubt about that in my mind. What? So, ever. But the issue is, I was so sure she's gonna bring Tangrove yet again, but she actually takes this opportunity to boost it off, of course, the mighty, mighty rain and get a very, very hard hit on me. And uh, yeah, I go for the Ice Punch and I screw my Swampert over basically and lose him in a matter of seconds. So, Swampert did well this game. Yeah, solid, solid two turns this game. But. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it deserved a picture on the screen. I, obviously, Swampert could have still been a game changer because the Tangrove could have potentially been used in her favor, but um, I still like, of course, this small left, which obviously walls it, and Zapdos can't really do anything against the Swampert outside of actually roost up and stuff like that. So I knew I was in a good position. Had I gone for a freaking EQ there, this game would have been a whole lot interesting, but sadly I do lose this battle to Hannah because the last one I have left is Kingra, and it doesn't survive. The rocks actually had too little HP. I did actually check it out after when I was uploading this, and uh, I needed 23 HP to survive <laughs> the stealth rock damage. You know, shame on me for actually not checking that out, but you no, know, in the end it didn't really matter. I do lose here trio, uh, but. You know, had I had the right EVs on my Ludicolo and Kingdra, things might have been different, at least for Ludicolo. But outside of that, I actually didn't mind losing this game. You know why? Because I was so proud of Hannah. I was so proud of her team. I think she played good. She really, really brought it. And in the end, that was really, really all I wanted. I wanted her to win. I wanted her to successfully defeat my team and it's very likely she would have pulled that off anyway even if I had right IVs I do believe that team was well constructed for this league now for you guys wonder how did it go for Hannah since the LBA hit off to that I say sadly guys she actually went out in the finals uh, for actually getting into the LBAs but she is actually the first person to join if somebody drops so that's something to keep in mind or at least one of the two. The other one is Villa Smogon, who's obviously lost his final. But it's hopefully very likely she'll actually come. And I do hope that if she joins the league, that I get, of course, a chance to upload her games too. If she now doesn't want to upload them herself, and if so, then I'm going to support her in any way I can for her to, of course, successfully upload games or, you know, get this quality for games. Um, I sounded really weird there, I'm sorry. But I'm, I'm trying to say I support Hannah, whatever she decides to do. And it's great if she actually joins the league because she is a really good player. And it would have been a lot of fun having her there. Um, so yeah, that's basically the game. I'm going to talk about the TBU a little bit. Because uh, tomorrow is supposed to be, of course, our upload of, you know, graph or anal uh, our analysis of the team, of course. And on Friday, we actually going to upload it badly. So, now that part has been a bit extended, which means on Saturday is when the team preview is going to come up, and on Sunday is when the battle comes up. So due to that, we're actually not going to have an upload either tomorrow on Thursday, or you know, it depends, but most likely not. Uh, and Friday is definitely not going to come up anything because I have nothing planned. Uh, I really didn't expect that, so due to that I'm actually... well. 
I'm out of content is what I'm trying to say. You know, I could upload something from Undertale and like that, but we'll see. Um, I'm I'm haven't decided just yet what I'll do, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much the size of it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this design, you know, the graphic, or did you even notice anything? If you didn't, then that's actually fine too. I do see it, and I think it looks splendid. It's so hot. <laughs> but yeah, everybody, I want really want to thank you for watching. It's always a pleasure having you guys here. And I see you in the next video, hopefully tomorrow. But I can't promise anything. But if not, then, you know, Saturday is a thing. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching. And I see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.